In recent years, we've been inundated with more remakes and reboots than you can shake a non-offensive, culturally diverse pro-feminist stick at. I mean, why bother creating something new and original when you could just borrow from someone else, throw in some blue hair dye, a bottle of soy milk, and call it a day? Cursed is the latest adaptation of the King Arthur mythos, but this version dares to ask the stunning and brave question, what if white man bad? It's really quite strange how folklore and myth that originates from Slavic, Greek, and Breton areas of the world can be changed in extremely drastic ways, including characters, story morals, and pretty much anything else. However, folklore and myth that originates from other parts of the world are considered sacred, unchangeable, and anyone who tries is accused of being literally this guy. So it should come as no surprise that the latest tale of King Arthur has been infused with all of the woke absurdities that you might find in current year. Several of the main characters are going to still be familiar. Nimue, also known as the Lady of the Lake, is part of the Fae, a magical group of people. We also have Arthur, destined to be king of all the Britons, and Merlin, the powerful wizard. Of course, there have been some pretty big changes to these characters and the story overall. The first is that King Arthur is not the main character. Instead, the story primarily focuses on Nimue, the Lady of the Lake. We start with an opening title introducing the Sword of Power and speaks of the young woman who wielded it. We see Nimue sinking into the lake wounded by an arrow, but after the intro we realize that this was from a future point in time. Here in the present, we see her on horseback headed to her village. She stops to get an offering from the forest for a ritual that her people will be conducting later that day. She starts hearing a mysterious voice that appears to be coming from a deer. She's told that death Death is not the end, and that she must save them, but before she can get more information, an arrow strikes the deer and kills it. And this is where the story starts to go downhill already, as we're about to get one of the most pathetically overused woke tropes in all of media. Both of the hunters are men, specifically white men. They of course bully the main character because they're just jerks. They taunt her about her father leaving and because she's a witch. At this point, she gets some flashbacks from when she was a child. And of course, Nimue, who is incredibly powerful, makes the bad men pay for being mean and nearly kills one of them with her magic. Yes. Queen, what? This kind of ridiculous scene has been done a million times in the new Star Trek series, in the latest Star Wars movies, in Westworld, in Captain Marvel, again and again and again. It's incredibly overused. Strong female character punishes the stupid white male. It is a tale told by an idiot. Nimue's mother arrives, manages to put a stop to the situation, and then both of them proceed to go to the ritual where a supernatural force known as the Hidden declare Nimue as their new summoner. Channeling her best Jon Snow, Nimue claims that she doesn't want it. I don't want it. There is a large group of people that are present at this ritual, and of course, the only person to object to Nimue being the new summoner is, of course, the old white guy. I am shocked. Shocked. But Nimue decides that she doesn't want any part of this and that she's going to leave and take a ship to a different kingdom entirely. We then jump over to a scene of an old man in red robes who is part of a group known as the Red Paladins. They're Christians who seek to destroy demons and other evil from the world. Part of this evil are the Fey people that Nimue is a part of. The Red Paladins are going village to village, burning and killing everyone that lives there. Boy, that escalated quickly. We cut to a tavern where two men are confronting a very drunk Merlin. Apparently, the wise and well-respected wizard from the original stories is nowhere to be found, having been replaced with this fool. It's possible that throughout the series, the character may once again become what he was traditionally portrayed as, but as for right now, Merlin is largely an incompetent drunkard. Is that like a personal attack or something? We find that Merlin has been tasked by the king to end the drought that's been affecting the region. But so far, Merlin has been unsuccessful. While walking the castle, he notices several ominous signs in the form of dead birds in patterns and begins to investigate. 
Back with Nimue and her friend, they're making their way to nearby Port City where a ship is going to take Nimue off to that desert kingdom. But she finds out that the ship left several days ago and will not return for another six months, leaving her trapped here for the time being. We then get introduced to a young Obama. Wait, hold on, wrong Netflix movie. All right, in this one, that's Arthur. Okay, Netflix, I'm not sure if you're new to the story of King Arthur, but he's one of the most prominent characters in all of British folklore. He's also very, very white. I'm Arthur, King of the Britons. Imagine for a second if Netflix made a series about Shaka Zulu, and in the title role, they cast Adam Driver. He chose poorly. It wouldn't make a whole lot of sense as it fundamentally changes the character, and there'd probably also be a lot of angry blue check marks claiming We had this sort of nonsense back in the day, like when John Wayne was hilariously miscast as Genghis Khan, but I thought we had moved past that sort of thing. But unfortunately, Hollywood and other various studios have decided to bring this sort of stupidity back, and some have even publicly and explicitly stated that they will not hire white men to be in any major or title roles, or if they are cast in a major role, then the character must be either stupid, evil, or just utterly incompetent. Sadly, changes like this are based on hatred or some other ridiculous notion of guilt or privilege. It was wrong and dumb back then, and it's still wrong and dumb now. You make me sad. Continuing on, Obama clearly doesn't have any game because he tries some of the worst pickup lines on Nimue, but lucky for him, the story says that they need to have a love interest between these two characters, so she decides to go with him to the tavern. The fact is, all of the romantic interactions between these two characters are twilight level cringe. <sighs> The three then go drinking at a tavern where once again another group of stupid white men cause problems. They begin to harass Obama until Nimue interjects. The man proposes a dice game where they play for silver. Nimue needs to roll the dice to get a seven through any combination. Obama claims that it's a scam because the dice are loaded, but Nimue uses her magic in order to win twice in a row. This entire scene is essentially just a different version than that first scene in the forest with the two hunters. It's a group of stupid white men and Nimue needs to punish them. Stop it, get some help. Here's the thing, I'm not specifically looking for these kinds of woke things in order to point out to you guys, but in this show, it's impossible to not notice because the show is so incredibly heavy-handed with their pontification of certain political agendas. There have been not one, but two scenes where evil white men get their comeuppance by a strong female character and several other scenes showing white men just as evil or stupid. I realize that in current year, it's a little difficult to get away from that sort of nonsense, but for fuck's sake, guy, 30 minutes into the show, and I know more about the political beliefs of the show creators than I do about the show characters. Obi, when it fits a woman. <laughs> Anyways, Nimue is accused of being a witch and chased out of the city by the Red Paladins, not even by the people that she cheated in the dice game, which doesn't really make a whole lot of sense, but whatever. The three of them hang out in the woods for the night where Obama and Nimue have some Twilight level romance again, and Nimue gets some weird visions that Merlin seems to end up sharing as he wakes up frantically searching for a meaning to all of the imagery. The next morning, Nimue and her friend Pim leave Obama in the woods and head back to the village, only to find it being attacked by the Red Paladins. This entire scene is just a mess. Both Nimue and her friend Pim haphazardly run straight into the fight, where her friend immediately gets picked up and carried away. <laughs> We see people fighting all around, but it's like they have the memory of a goldfish because someone will grab Nimue and then two seconds later completely forget all about her. Also, it looks like they've been setting up crosses in order to burn the witches at the stake, but 
Who's setting these up? There's a big fight going on right now, and several people are fighting to the death right where the crosses are being set up. Clearly, they weren't there before, and they're not part of the village, but it makes absolutely no sense for the Red Paladins to try to set these things up in the middle of the fight while they're engaging with the enemy. Not a great plan. And speaking of fighting, this is some of the worst choreography that I've ever seen outside of a CW show. I mean, look at this idiot right here just running after someone, flailing the sword around. And then these two are supposed to be fighting, but it looks like they're just helping each other out of the scene. I mean, it looks like they just want to get away from the show. Nimue gets captured and is about to be placed on one of the stakes when suddenly a large amount of arrows start raining from the sky, allowing her to escape. We don't see who is shooting the arrows, nor does it make any sense for the villagers to be doing that because most of them had either been killed or captured and the rest were just running for their lives. This would have been a great opportunity for the show to display how powerful Nimue is instead of that stupid hunter scene we had at the beginning of the show. Instead, we get Deus Ex Machina arrows because Nimue's a main character and the plot says that she needs to get away. I hate this. It is revolting. She runs off into a cave where her mother is there and appears to be wounded, but I'm not even sure about that because it looks like there's a blood trail that starts right next to her, which would have meant that she was wounded in this location, but if that's the case, then where's the person that caused the wound? There is a red paladin that comes in later, but why would he not finish her off the first time? It doesn't make any sense. Also, why does the blood look so incredibly fake? I thought it was colored sand for a few seconds. Her mother gives Nimue a sword wrapped in cloth and says that she needs to take it to Merlin. At that point, a red paladin shows up and kills Nimue's mother, where Nimue then runs off. We then switch over to Merlin, who's still trying to figure out what all the different signs mean, and there's now a massive storm with lots of rain and thunder, and in the distance, Merlin sees several crowns in the clouds. He is struck by lightning, which burns the image of a sword into his body. Inside the castle, the king has declared that the drought is over and tries to drink a bucket of rainwater, which has somehow magically turned into blood. Also, all the rain outside has turned into blood as well. Nimue is then seen running for her life, but instead of being chased by the red paladins, she's now being chased by a random pack of wolves. They're all CGI and look pretty terrible. Nimue gets bit several times by them, but just shrugs it off because apparently, hey, CGI can't hurt you. Nimue finally figures out that the thing inside the cloth is a sword, and lucky for her, the wolves don't try to attack her anymore, and instead just start barking at her, allowing her to kill them easily. Easily. What the hell happened here? This scene is meant to be powerful and emotional for the viewer as Nimue finally embraces her calling, but I honestly laughed at how bad it was. She's not very graceful or skilled with the sword, and that makes sense because the character has never trained with it before. <laughs> But the actress goes way over the top and just makes the whole thing look comical. Combine that with the wolves that not only look terrible and outdated for CGI, but suddenly forget to attack and the whole thing is just a joke. I mean, look at this. There's a wolf standing right behind her that for whatever reason just doesn't attack and patiently waits their turn to be killed. There's another one that does the same thing. This reminds me of that terrible fight scene in The Last Jedi where the guards deliberately miss or just patiently wait their turn to be attacked. And that's the first episode. There's so much wrong with this show. Even if we ignore all the blatant political nonsense, it still doesn't change the fact that the CGI looks like it's 10 years old, the pacing is all over, the fight choreography is just terrible, and it's almost as bad as the attempt at romance. But to top it all off, the lead actress just isn't very good. She overacts almost everything. At no point does it resemble a believable person and always appears as if it's a caricature. Obama is just as bad, and the leader of the Red Paladins has been reduced to a mustache-twirling cartoony villain. I can't really expect much more from the next episode, but honestly, I'm not sure how it can get worse. 
Strange women lying in ponds distributing swords is no basis for a system of government.